All right, so we responded down here for a possible bomb threat that was called in anonymously um, to the lingerie department. Um, an unknown person was um, making unusual comments to the workers and then kind of got irritated and said, uh, made somewhat of a statement about blowing the target up if they didn't do what he asked. And uh, the call was made through 911 to us. And then we came down, we responded down here uh, through our protocol, handled the uh, call, uh, trying to evacuate the building and um, check out all the cars in the parking lot. And at this current time, the detectives for National PD are following up uh, the leads in this case. And what was the reason for checking the cars in the parking lot? Well, you never know if somebody who called it in is sitting out here in the car. Did you have any reason to think that he, was it a he or a, it was a, ma it was a male caller? Male caller. Did you have any reason to think he was in the store looking at the employees when he called? Well, we didn't know. You, you, we're uh, given very little details. It's a, a quick phone call. And can you characterize in any more detail the type of request he made? Um, no. All right, everybody at 84 Wicked Explorers, and we're doing a dead mall again, except this one's not quite a dead mall. This one's actually a pretty good mall, and we're looking at the map of a mall between two states, and we'll talk about that very soon. So we started here. Uh, the reason I wanted to come to this mall is because it's not a dead mall. I hadn't been to this mall uh, in about... I think it's probably pushing 11 years now, if I remember correctly. I don't think I've been there before. 2019 but to me this mall was always kind of very interesting because I never I never really been to it many times prior to 2009 um, although I went to college right up the street from it so I, you think I should have I would have but I didn't um, so what I wanted to do is kind of check this out since we now as you've seen it from our last video we are now located and we live closer to New Hampshire now I, I wanted to take advantage of my ride home and pop in so this is the Pheasant Lane Mall, technically in Nashua, New Hampshire. It was basically a project started in the early 80s that ended up being finished in 1986 that was between the states of Massachusetts and New Hampshire. And during the time, there were some situations where half the mall was going to be a mass, half the mall was New Hampshire. All the retail stores were going to be in New Hampshire, so they have to pay sales tax, and all the restaurants were going to be a mass, so it's cheap a mass tax. But because of Massachusetts wanted the sales tax, it was a very complicated system. And I think we're going to get into a little bit of that as we go into this mall. But as you walk in, it's, it's a modern looking mall. Uh, it was built in, it opened in July 23rd, 1986. It's located at 310 Daniel Webster Highway, uh, Highway in Nashville, New Hampshire. Owned by Simon Property Groups. There is 139 mall, uh, stores in there. There are five anchors. One's vacant. It's just recently vacant in stairs that just recently happened a couple months ago when that big closing they just did. Uh, it's 9,700, 9,079, 426,000 square feet. There's two floors. It's kind of built like on a side of a hill. So when you walk into the mall on one side, you're at highway level, but you're walking onto the second floor. And then around the other side of the mall uh, is a lot lower. So you walk in on the first floor and have to go up to get to the second floor. So it's kind of unique. It's kind of built it's kind of a hilly area, so it's built into the side of a hill, which is not a bad idea. Uh, let's see. It's one of the largest shopping malls in the state of New Hampshire and is a focal point of commercial area of the, Na of the Nashua area. Nashua is a pretty big city in New Hampshire, right on the Massachusetts border. As of 2020, the mall had about 139 stores and kiosks, including four anchor stores, Dick's Sporting Goods, J.C. Penney's, Macy's, and Target, with one vacant anchor, uh, which was Sears, 
plus five restaurant, uh, 15 restaurants since 2012 it has been owned and managed by the Simon Property Group. Located just south of Exit 1 uh, on the F.E. Everett Turnpike, U.S. 3 in Nashua, and directly northbound exit, Exit 36 of U.S. 3 in Tingsboro, Massachusetts, the property straddles the state line, although the entire mall is in New Hampshire. Approximately, the border has been... Long, uh, approximately the border has long drawn shoppers from Massachusetts seeking advantage in New Hampshire's lack of sales tax. So yes, New Hampshire doesn't have sales tax. So anyone who lives close to this mall would rather go here than the Massachusetts mall because you don't get to pay sales tax, which is pretty convenient. Plus they get a el- uh, big uh, state uh, alcohol store right in the mall parking lot too in the New Hampshire line. So also cheaper booze as well. Approximately one third of the parking lot and water runoff area is located in Tingsboro, Massachusetts. Shoppers who park in the front of the former stairs entrance close to the Buffalo Wild Wings walk across the state line in front of the building onto the sidewalk from their cars. The J.C. Penney stores was originally built with a square corner that reached slightly across the border in Massachusetts, but then was modified to an unusual pentagon shape at the state line to keep the entire within New Hampshire by a few inches. With all these modifications, the entire mall would have had been subject to Massachusetts sales tax, even though only a few inches of the structure was actually in Massachusetts. So that's pretty interesting. Massachusetts really whacking the hammer on uh, getting sales tax for this place. Uh, as I was walking through the mall, most of it was actually uh, full. There was very few vacant stores, very few mom and pop stores. And, uh, and we're walking towards the J.C. Penny wing right here. This is a very retro 80s J.C. Penney's. I love it. They had not updated the J.C. Penney's at all, which is really, really cool. The same sign and everything. I makes you feel like I'm a kid again going back into the old days. Um, brief history on the mall. The mall was first rezoned by the National Board of uh, Aldermen in December of 1978 with the intention of clearing the way for primary owners Yankee Greyhound Inc. to build a major regional retail center on the site. By early 1984, the property was owned by State Properties of New England, previously a minority owner. Groundwork had been started and still had been ordered. After more than two years of construction, the Fezzalane Mall opened on July 23, 1986. The original anchors of JC were J.C. Penney, Jordan Marsh, Leachmere, and Sears, along with filings added in 1993. The site was previously a drive-in movie theater, and for several years following its opening, the former movie screens used to act stay displayed in the on uh, the Pheasant Lane Mall logo. The resultant mall development transformed South Nashua. It turned the southern portion of the city roughly conforming to the city's eighth ward from a sparsely populated outlined area into a swift financial retail and high density residential development that stretches from over the border into Tingsboro, Massachusetts, to exit three of the Everett Turnpike just south of Riviera College. The rise of self Nashua spurred by the Pheasant Lane Mall ha- has elevated Nashua's municipal identity beyond a gateway to New Hampshire and helped create its current status as part of the Greater Boston Economic Area and a hub for the surrounding bedroom communities. The nature of the building on a border between the states with no sales tax in New Hampshire and a state with sales tax Massachusetts has shown in the change in plans and problems. Originally, the mall has was to straddle the border with retail on the no sales tax side, restaurants were to be on the opposite side in the Massachusetts. However, the governor of Massachusetts declared all customers in the stores would have to pay Massachusetts sales tax. Therefore, the mall was redesigned so all the stores and restaurants were on the New Hampshire side of the border. That's what I kind of mentioned earlier. However, the state lines have been drawn up incorrectly, placed in one corner of the J.C. Penney building into Massachusetts. Conse- consequently, the corner of the J.C. Penney's was cut off and re bricked into the current pentagon shape so if you look at the jc pennies now um, it's very interesting it's a very unique style of building it's literally the it's inches on the uh property line so here we are we're walking through the food court right now this is uh, a full food court which i was uh, very happy to see a lot of these food courts these days you don't really see uh much activity of them a lot of feel like the other restaurants are kind of going the way there were a couple of mom and pop type style restaurants but I don't know if they were just local restaurants for the New Hampshire area or they were like, you know, mom and pop. But the mall, the mall was extremely clean. I mean, it was pretty interesting how well maintained this mall is. Uh, there was a rule in this mall, I remember in the mid 2000s or early 2000s, um, about uh, having to have 
you couldn't be in the mall if you were under the age of like 15 on a Friday or Saturday night. Or well, I think any night after 8 o'clock, you need to be accompanied by adults. Because I think they were having some issues with gangs and some trouble with the kids hanging out at the mall on Friday and Saturday nights. So you had to be accompanied by an adult. Uh, I'm not sure if that rule still is in place, but I do distinctly remember seeing signs for that when I was there about 10 years ago. Um, the Jordan Marsh location was occupied in spring of 1996 by Macy's, which had moved in early 2006 with the space formally taken by Filings when Macy's was merged to Filings. The original Jordan Marsh location in the mall is now a Dick's Sporting Goods. Restaurants, Burton Grill, Red Robin, and Shops Vision Works and Massage Envy are uh, also located in the mall. Leachmere closed in the fall of 1997 and it was rebuilt and it turned into a Target, which we walked into when we went to the mall. Um, one thing is interesting, the upstairs of this mall has carpet, as you can see right now, which is pretty cool. Uh, downstairs is tile. It's a very 80, late 80s, early 90s design. Uh, I love the lighting in this mall. I don't know if you could see it up there, but instead of having fluorescent lighting and spotlight and kind of just beaming all down and everything like that, it had this like really comforting and very warm and very like welcoming. Like, like this mall is like cool to be at night. It's like dusk right now, as you can see in the skylights. But the lights weren't so bright. It wasn't like so in your face. It was kind of just like being in like your home, being like in your living room. It's very warm and very inviting. And I actually really enjoyed walking through this mall a lot. I thought it was really, really cool. Um, and it's just, it's very chill, you know, it's, and I think it's probably why it's been, you know, operating. I mean, the Rockingham Mall, which is down the street, you know, probably 20 minutes away is, you know, about the same size. But the last time we were there, it doesn't look like it's doing as well as this mall. This mall actually looks like it's, out of all the malls we went to New Hampshire, so we've been to Mall of New Hampshire. We went to, uh, Concord Mall up in New Hampshire, the Dying Mall, the Dead Mall, I should say. And all those malls were, you know, a Dead Mall, a Dying Mall. And here's a mall that's doing great. I mean, look at the stores. A lot of them have not even updated uh, their um, storefronts. I mean, for the most part, they're uh, still the original storefronts. They probably were, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, which is really cool because they didn't feel the need to update them. Why update them if the stores are doing great, you know? No one cares. People are still coming to the mall. And it was a Monday night, right after work, and it was a decent amount of people in there. So, as for just my analysis on this mall, just judging by, you know, the stores and the amount of people and the cleanliness and everything that has to do with that, I think this mall is doing great. I think this is a very, this is one of the few malls, Hindu malls in the country that are actually, you know, still producing. I don't have factual numbers on this. I would like to see them, but I'm just pretty impressed by what I've seen and I'm happy that there's still signs of life in some of these malls you know and we've seen this with the North Shore Mall and the South Shore Plaza in Massachusetts it's like it's good to see malls are still operating and I think malls at a point will still operate but I think what's going to happen is there's just going to be less of them you know um to, Fez, to go over real real quick final information about the mall in 2011 the Fezley Mall went under a 10 million dollar renovation that included a redesign of the food court new light and fixtures, ceramic tiles and carpet, as well as expansion of a number of the retailers and restaurants, and the renovations were finished in 2012. So it's a freshly renovated mall with, you know, a little bit of fails in the 90s by the architectural design, but, you know, over the last eight years, it's still kept up and it looks great, you know, and I'm sure it will keep on doing great because this is pretty much the best place to go for shopping in, you know, a 20, 30 mile radius of this area. In 2015, Sears Holdings spun off 235 properties, including Sears and the Fezzanay Mall. On November 7, 2009, it was announced that Sears would be closing as part of the 96 store-wide closing, and the store finally closed on February 2, 2020. So the wing hasn't quite been affected yet. It is a main anchor at the far side of the mall that we're actually walking away from right now. There's a few stores there that are out of business, a couple of mom and pops in that area, but it hasn't really killed that wing yet. So I'll be very surprised. Well, I shouldn't say I should be very I, I want to see what is in store for this wing now that uh, Sears is out and what's going to happen because that's usually what kills malls is when an anchor goes out and nothing goes in to replace it because really what box store is going to go in there to replace it? Box stores are going out of business. They're not building them anymore. So it's too bad. So oh, I'm curious if they convert that big box store into something like a school or some office space or, 
you know, take it down altogether. I'm, I, I'm very curious what's going to happen to all these malls upstairs. Like, for example, the uh, North Shore Mall just knocked down the entire stairs altogether and made it an entrance. And, you know, they're putting some outdoor shopping out there and everything, but that was pretty much it. Um, so, yeah, it's very interesting to see what's happening, especially when big box stores go out. So we're ending the mall right now. If you guys like the video, please subscribe. And if you like the channel, obviously, please subscribe. We do a lot of dead malls. We do live malls. We do shopping. We do amusement parks. We do everything. So thank you guys for watching. Hit the little subscribe button. Please leave your comments below. I'm dying to know what you guys think of this not dead mall. And we'll, guys, we'll see you soon. Bye. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and click the alarm so wherever you get notification, we get new ones. See you later. Bye.